Hi, uh, I'm James Flynn, and I'm here in the office nice and early. I thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, not harass everybody else and do a quick little uh, presentation. Um, so this presentation I'm going to give is on feedback and kind of the importance of it. So if you guys listen to the Game On presentation, I was saying here's one thing that you could offer. This is one of the one things that is kind of missing is feedback and what we're doing. And so what I'm going to do is give some quick examples of feedback and then kind of show how it like changes the way people feel about things and it's just gonna be a real quick slide deck I think it's only like 14 slides or something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and advance that now alright so here's an example of feedback uh, another example uh, another name for this what you hear is transparency so all the food companies kind of figured this out you know they're like why are we like trying to put a picture up of some why don't we just show what's there to offer uh, this is an example of some nice healthy foods and you guys this is a very hard uh, picture to find I was actually looking all over the internet for something like this uh, since we're in healthcare I thought we shouldn't be putting junk food up uh, so there you go so here's an example of transparency and how it kind of works and we don't even think about it we just go up uh, we look and we say alright number 33 looks good ding ding we put in our 50 cents and we get some uh, crispy balanced banana slices so wow that takes a long time all right, here's another example of feedback. Uh, here you go. This is just your average, we expect this, right? It's just like, yeah, I don't know if, uh, I remember my grandfather father saying, uh, it's got indoor plumbing. Well, it's because he probably had like out, you know, he had an outhouse back in the day. We just expect it. We grew up with like refrigeration and, and, and toilets and stuff like that. So we kind of expect it. Cars, same thing. How fast am I going? What's my temperature? What are my RPMs, et cetera, et cetera. We don't just drive around until we run out of gas. We kind of know and we go, you know, fill it up. So here's some more examples. Uh, this is uh, your, this would be on the right, you know, something how everyone kind of has something like this nowadays. Like here's your so-and-so status or here on, you know, here on, on your different things. You have these like progression bars showing you how much further you have to go. So there's actually been studies showing that, like, uh, the first examples were, buy, you know, buy 10, get one free. This was, like, back in, like, when you're buying sugar uh, and flour down on, in, you know, the 1800s on the dock. Well, they realized that people actually sped up their consumption at the end. Uh, so what they did was, why, why is that? Well, I'm so close to my goal. I'm just going to go, you know, go ahead and go for it. You've probably seen this with uh, coffee, coffees, you know, like Starbucks and stuff like that or you get to closer to the end, what do you do? You go buy, you go buy like, X, hey, I'll buy you a coffee too. You buy two coffees, now you got three coffees because you get one three just because why? So what they'll do is to, to kind of manipulate that a little bit, if you will, is they'll just up it to 12 and punch the first two. So now you have this like other thing going on too. It's like a, a nudge, if you will. It's behavioral economics where well, you've already committed to this. You've already got two things. You might as well play it out. And also kind of makes you say, hey, I'm closer, I have more progression towards my goal. Uh, this over here on the left is just a picture of your, your phone, per se. This is the front of my phone. Uh, it's telling me the time, it's telling me the date, it's telling me I got a conference going up. It's also telling me a couple of other things uh, that I'm, you know, I have a full battery, I got so-and-so, I'm doing wireless or whatever, and I got an email or something like that. So here's another example of feedback. Uh, this is this is feedback from me of where I am flying through the air and this is my wife who is notoriously late for picking me up so this is about the hey I'm 20 minutes out mark so I quickly took a picture of this sent it to her saying this is where I'm at I'm coming in from LA now's a good time to go warm up the car and drive it on drive it over to the airport and uh, pick me up so I'm getting feedback of where I'm at and I'm giving my wife feedback of where I'm at, and hopefully she, you know, she's got she's got the hard work. She's got to get the kids all bundled up and ready to go and in the car seat. So I'm just letting her know, like, hey, I'm here, I'm coming. Now yeah, start prepping, kind of thing. So here's a funny one. Uh, this was I went down um, I went down to Texas, down down there to Austin, and I was leaving, and there was the the hurricanes that you can see in this map that were actually in Oklahoma. And I wondered what, you know, what's it look like? What are the delays and stuff like that? So I looked on the one map to the right uh, and I saw, wow, that's, that's what they look like you know, on, on the weather chart. 
And then I went over to see what the planes were doing, and for fun, I had this great little sensory feedback. Uh, oh, wow, look at all the planes avoiding that. Uh, here's another example of a game where you deprive feedback. So a pinata. How boring would this game be if you just went up and you just whacked the you know, crap out of a pinata? First kid gets up, wham, hits it, he gets all the candy. Sorry, suckers. But no, we make it fun by actually depriving that feedback. Uh, so, so this was originally done for APIA, and we were talking about where we kind of wanted to go and what we wanted our vision to be for who we were and what we were doing. And we kind of were taking a lot of different approaches, so we kind of looked at this and we said, you know what, uh, we want to have a lot of bottom-up feeding to our ideas and what we're doing. Uh, we wanted to be open in how we did it. We wanted it to be more of a conversation and not something that we're pushing out saying this is what we're doing. Uh, it's part it's part of this open dialogue that's going on. Uh, try to use digital media, you know, things in what we're doing and websites and Facebook, uh, stuff like that, rather than trying to, you know, put a poster up. Uh, and not saying that that's bad, but we also wanted to have an approach of many-to-many -many, uh, rather than one-to-many. So we want it to be very open where people talk about you and stimulate stimulate that, you know, this is what we're doing and what do you think about what we're doing and feel free to go about it. And that really equivalents to like a transparency, if you will. So uh, it's everywhere and it defines the next generation. And I think that's very important to, to understand that we might have done things a certain way, but things are changing. And this, the millennials that are coming, coming into the workforce are definitely uh, going to be game changers in a lot of this. And so you even look at like the open government initiative, uh, people, it's, it, it's always baffles me that people get, you know, they talk about government spending or they talk about the budget and they talk about all this other stuff and we're wasting all our money on school teachers. We need to get rid of the school teachers and all that. Yeah, yeah, they get rid of them. They're, they're bad people, apparently, you know, or kids' education. Uh, but when you look at it, you, you, you go look at these budgets and stuff online and you start to see like, oh, wow, we are spending a lot of money elsewhere. And a lot of that is like Department of Defense, per se. It's huge. It's like we're paying for taxes of like, you know, something that happened down in Mexico back at the, you know, turn of the century kind of thing. And so that's really interesting, like that they're starting to become very, very transparent with a lot of this stuff. And if, if you want, you can go, go on to the White House and kind of look at these kind of things and check it out. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. Um, so one of the key elements about this, and this is really interesting to me, um, I think the first step to transparency and to providing that feedback back is you have to know where the heck you are. Uh, so this is a really good quote. You should measure things that you care about. And if you're not measuring, you don't care and you don't know. And that is true. It's, it, it, it really is staggering how many people don't know simple things like in healthcare and what they're doing. And, and I don't mean just the people on the ground a lot of times. I mean like the whole administration. Sometimes they don't know like how many diabetics do we have? How, what is our screen rates for this or whatever, you know, our PAP or MAMO screen rates? Well, how are we doing with, you know, cervical cancer and stuff like that? And some do. And when they do, they for providing better care. And I think that it starts with what are you going to measure? What do you want to improve at? And then how do you know it's an improvement? You got to measure it. So one of the things we like to do is uh, shift the focus. So for many years, if you look at when we, we, we hear about a report cards or a, a dashboard uh, or, you know, pay, you know, you, you look at incentives that are looking at it, it, it really is not data for improvement, but a lot of times it's data for accountability. People kind of are hesitant to have, right? They don't want to know those numbers a lot of times because they're going to get yelled at probably. And what you got to do is you got to shift that focus. You got to really turn that around. And, you know, here's a, a Spartan cheerleaders. Uh, what you really want to do is say, what are our wins and what are we doing good at? And what are the impact stories behind this? You know, what impact story can we tell? Uh, if we were screening cervical cancer at 30%, which is horrible, and we've actually brought it up to 80% in the last year, well, this is a, there's an impact story behind there. I guarantee you somewhere along the, the line, uh, especially with like colorectal cancer screening, you probably found like abnormal findings. And somewhere along the line is you are actually started a progress of maybe cancer treatment or early detection. So that's what we want to do. We want to use our feedback and our measurement systems to kind of like start to shift the focus into like, what's our wins? What are we doing good? Let's look at that. 
So here's an example that uh, we would give out, and we do this constantly. We try to keep our, group, our, our groups of people in the know. Uh, so this is me just sending out an email. I'm sending it out to everybody, uh, and this is, this is all, this is where we're at. This is how we're doing. Strong work teams, good job. Hey, keep it up. Uh, and we're letting everyone know these are what our measurements are, and this is this is how how good we're doing. So this is a little fictitious. I just kind of uh, move some numbers around. Um, this is at the end of the year, but basically uh, what we do is we have a national goal, and we're saying this is how many are due. And if you um, and you can't really see it on the screen the way this is recorded, but we we're like 20, and and we have, we're missing one. But you can see quite visually, uh, yes, green, 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 and then you got a big red no. Well, that's beautiful, because uh, what's going to happen is, is that's just a visual thing. We somehow want to correct that, and we know that we just need 11 more retinopathies, and we will meet this measure. So we constantly provide this feedback out to our staff, and our staff, in turn, uh, gets excited. They go out, and they, they move forward trying to accomplish some of these goals. So, uh, and then this is just some examples, and uh, this is some, you know, uh, this is our Carolyn Crowder, and this is our... our wonderful leader here, and she, she really is uh, the mother to a lot of the work that we do. She's out there just constantly, just pounding away, like, good job, guys, awesome, way to go. And, and a lot of that uh, comes from uh, the, the internal motivations and drives of the people who work here, the DNA that make them up. And they, they try to always choose positivity over happy, happiness. Uh, they default to transparency. Uh, they have a focus on self-improvement, so we're always trying to prove what we're doing. That they have a no ego. Uh, they, they try to be one of those no ego doers. So I'm doing this not because it, you know uh, um, it's going to make us all look great. We're doing this because this is the right thing to do, and it's fun. You know, we're improving healthcare as we go. We're we're finding those abnormal screens, um, and be open to having your mind changed. Have bias towards clarity. Make time to reflect. Live smarter, not harder. Uh, sounds very. All these are cliche, but they actually are true. They actually. They, they, they create difference. And when you do this right, when you go out and you have some fun, like uh, Monique and Benny over here on, on the right who are goofing around at an IPC QILN classes, uh, and we're, we're all emailing each other and having a good time doing this, uh, it starts to pay off. Uh, here is Mike C., our board director, our health board director. And this guy is like, uh, he's like the patient Dave in a lot of ways. He's our, one of our biggest advocates. And he goes on right onto Facebook and posts, and this is something that you can, we can put on our, uh, our API Facebook page. Good morning. You guys are doing great. You guys, they're down here working hard. Uh, down here in Sacramento, this is, that's the feedback. So this is our, not only is this a board director, but this is a community member, somebody who receives health care within our tribal health organization. And he is posting back. So he's a patient saying, hey, this is how you guys are doing. Awesome work. Awesome. Good job, staff. And healthcare I'm getting is great. That's ex what it's all about. If you are not doing this, it's, it's moot point. Uh, what you want to do is create this stage, build the stage in this environment for, for this actual end results. And when you're doing that, you know uh, your work's fun, it's exciting, and you're doing the right thing. So I hope this uh, helps, and I hope you guys have some fun with it. Thanks.